Hello, c'est Jean-Marc from Midibox, and today we are talking about Gimbal 5. Gimbal 5 is a spherical roll positioner. And we need to understand the coordinate system that a spherical roll positioner uses, uh, as opposed to an HV positioner, which maybe we are more familiar with, like a Gimbal 4. So, we come back to a gim Gimbal 4, an HV positioner. An HV positioner... I mean, this is my DUT, okay? <laughs> no, and this is this is my bore site uh, direction for my um, radiating element. And and I want what I want to do with uh, is to do a three D capture. So I need to cover the entire the entire surface of the orange of my DUT. So this is my bore site. This is my measuring. My you guys are the measuring point, okay? So if we this is elevation, vertical elevation, and this is azimuth, you know, azimuth, H, horizontal. Um, so we have an HV positioner. What we do is uh, to cover the entire surface. Our measurement point is here, that's the camera. And I'm moving both in, uh, in, in azimuth and in elevation, and I cover like this uh, in a zigzag pattern the entire surface of the, you know, orange. Okay, so that's an HV position, and that's not what we do for a spherical roll positioner. For a spherical roll positioner, I have a still have an orange. It's a little bit different because now we are looking at it from from the top, and and the bore side now is at the stem, and um, and we holding we holding the DUT from the back, and now we have a, a new coordinate system which is theta, which is almost like azimuth. And then we have phi, and phi is kind of the rotation of the orange on its, on its, uh, on its axis, right, or our DUT. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to turn it on its axis and make a slice. So we're gonna measure all those points here. And then, and then we're gonna measure all those points here and then turn and we measure all those points. So we, we are going to cover the entire um, quarters like, like, like this of the entire orange. So we still have a full 3D capture, but uh, it is natively spherical because when I render my coordinate, my, my coordinate system with uh, phi and theta is already a spherical coordinate system. So now... I hope that <laughs> that's uh, clearer for you. I'm not sure. That's not easy to wrap your head around it. Um, it takes some time. For, uh, we need to clarify something, and that something is about polarization. So as I mentioned, we are turning the uh, DUT on its uh, bore side axis. Now, if we do that, everybody understand that we, we, we're going to rotate around the, 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 the polarization. So most cases, if our probe is a single polarized uh, horn antenna, like uh, something like this, right? Now we're going to go off polarization. So there are two ways we could go about it. We could have a dual polarized antenna on this side and do a summation of uh, the, the two planes. And, and that would give us the total uh, the, the total power un, un, uh, unpolarized. So that could be one way, but sometimes it's interesting to know how your antenna is performing in, in polarization and then in cross polarization, right? So for that, our, our, our solution for that is that as we rotate our DUT in theta and spin around phi, we are going to rotate our probe by the same amount. So now phi, and delta phi, they're going to be in sync or off sync. Or, you know, we can control delta phi, make it equal to phi or not equal to phi if we want to measure cross polarization, right? So now we have three axes. We have theta and phi and delta phi. When phi and, de and, de phi and delta phi, they are in sync such that as we go along and, and cover the surface, 
polarization stays in sync. So that's one of the unique uh, solution that we have in our system. So now we're ready, we can jump in and see how it works. Uh, here we have a, an MBX32. So 32 is the, uh, the large cavity uh, system, but only two chambers. So that's uh, 5.5 uh, feet of, uh, of size and uh, one meter of uh, far field. Underneath, we have a USB VNA uh, from Copper Mountain with the uh, dual port uh, uh, extenders. We are going to do all our measurement between 26 and 28 gigahertz. Here we have Gimbal 5 positioner, right? So theta axis, phi axis uh, controller. And on this side, we have the motor motorized uh, horn uh, with rotating uh, probe uh, to track a phi. Let's have a closer look at uh, Gimbal 5. This particular model is a uh, Gimbal 5 440. Um, that, the, that depicts the, uh, the, the height. Uh, it's made the MBX 3X series. We have another version, which is Gimbal 5 340, which is made for the MBX 020304 uh, chambers. Those two uh, Gimbal 5 models uh, work uh, pretty much the same. We can look at the base here, and that, this is our Theta controller. And that rotates along this axis uh, on center with our DUT here. Then we have the phi controller. Uh, it rotates our DUT along, you know, this particular axis. So we have those two axes that cross about here in front of the aperture of our DUT. Uh, the wiring is done through the center here because all, all the rotation uh, controllers are hollow, such that you can feed coax like we do in the, for the theta. And we have the same in the back here. Uh, there's a hole, uh, about five centimeter hole, where we can uh, fish our, um, uh, co uh, our coax or any kinds of uh, um, power or any uh, connection that we need to bring to our DUT. So we'll bring it from the center here down the legs here that have during operation. We have those adjuster bolts here. They, they, they are adjusting the horizontality of the phi axis. Make sure that the, uh, the phi axis is uh, horizontal under different kind of loads. You know, if you have a heavy load, uh, a gimbal five support up to five kilos. If you have a heavier load, you may have a little bit of tilt and then you adjust it with those bolts here. That's a manual adjustment that you do only once. We have laser that you can see here, which is offset from our, from our center position at 160 millimeter of offset. And we have the same on the probe side. We have a target, which is offset from 160 a millimeter from the from the borside uh, center of the probe. This point we can see the two axes. Uh, this is theta axis, and this is phi axis. And then the the. The position that we program to be our home position, which is the one that we adjust with the laser or that we find with the uh, um, uh, automatic beam alignment uh, uh, software that we have, then that's the home position, which is the H. That's our home, right? Now let's take a look at the uh, the probe. The, the probe or on post is like this. So I think here you can see the crosshair of the, uh, of the laser. That's perfectly aligned with the center of our probe and aligned with the center of the um, of the target. Probe that we use here is a standard gain horn um, with uh, an additional uh, waveguide, you know, that such that we can have a good uh, alignment of the uh, of the probe with the rotation axis, and in the back. We have the coax with a, a long dead loop here. It could be smaller than that, but a, a dead loop and a zip tie. And then we go down to the, uh, to the uh, instrument bay under the uh, chamber where we connect to the VNA, right? So when we see it, 
uh, in operation looks like this. So this is delta phi. It's rotating like that. But we don't have to control delta phi independently because de delta, delta phi always strike phi. So we control de theta and phi and delta phi will follow. It can follow in polarization, like at zero, zero degree offset, or it could follow at any uh, offset, uh, polarization offset, uh, namely like 22.5, 22 you could do 45, you can do 90, you know, the full cross polarization to measure other uh, polarization. So here, what I did is that I, I swapped the uh, standard gain horn that we had for calibration earlier with an, an actual uh, DUT that has defect. That's not a good uh, DUT. That's actually a 3D printed um, uh, a, a horn, a rectangular horn that I just designed. And it's it's made of plastic and it's covered with uh, metallic paint. So it's going to get some impairment. It's not going to be a perfect uh, horn, but we're going to measure it and look at it and see uh, uh, it, it's closer to a real situation where you're trying to find out what your antenna uh, looks like instead of a standard gain horn from the market. So we're going to do a 3D sweep. Um, two, two, uh, one. And then uh, theta, we're going to do minus 90 plus 90. And then phi, we're going to do minus 90 plus 90. So we'll do a full uh, half a sphere. And then uh, step size, we'll do two degree. Theta phi, this is our polarization offset. So we'll uh, ask for zero. A tag we do give him zero five and frequency we're going to plot at 28 gigahertz uh, that's for the monitoring but our actual uh, our actual uh, trace capture is from 26 uh, gigahertz to 28 gigahertz uh, and uh, we have 25 points in our trace uh, so we're gonna we're gonna capture 25 uh, radiation pattern in one shot and that but that plot is going to be fairly long. It has many points. Um, so it's going to take, uh, what, uh, an hour 40 in real time. And we'll have our measurement after that. And we'll see if our antenna is as bad as it looks. So this is really where you see how uh, a spherical roll a coordinate system works, right? So you have the, uh, the zero degree slice, and then you increase, you know, the degree, and then you do uh, you do slice that are across the bauxite, uh, like we we had seen uh, earlier. So you rotate the DUT along its uh, bauxite uh, axis. Okay, so now the uh, the sweep is complete. We can see a, a nice rendition of the capture. Even though this antenna is not perfect, that's what we wanted. We wanted something with imperfection and oddities. And when we close this plot, we're gonna see it in uh, in uh, in a uh, in a three D radius. So that's beautiful. We like it already. 
we see that we have, you know, unevenness, you know, like many problems. Of course, you remember, this, this is something that we captured uh, from a, a 3D printed uh, antenna in millimeter wave, which is not uh, so common. And we have we have issues, so we are really happy with the uh, the the resolution of our capture and the uh, the accuracy of our plot. Yeah, so at at this point we had a pretty good look into gimbal five, and we still have to answer a couple of questions. Uh, one being What's the difference? You know, what's the why? Why would you use a gimbal five versus a gimbal four? You know, HV position. The um, there are several uh, several uh, important aspects there. First, there is a mechanical advantage uh, for gimbal five that it's easier for it to support heavier load, and the reason is that it doesn't have you know that counter cantilever kind of uh, mount that HV positioners have, you know, with the arms and, and the platform in the back that that is uh, that has to lift uh, the load to a bore side. Here, you, can, you could leave this uh, position for hours and hours, and the motors are not doing any, you know, pressure, uh, are not applying any pressure because it's a natural, you know, set position. That's kind of the mechanical. That's why uh, gim uh, you know spherical roll positioners have less stress than HV positioners, and can carry a higher load. That's one. The second point is that if you have uh, an, an antenna or a, a, a phase array system that you need to test that have very wide aperture and and uh, very wide um, angle like close to Omni or something like that. An HV positioner, because they hold the DUT from the side, could be uh, could bring some impairment in the measurement at wide angle. In With a, a spherical roll positioner, you're holding the DUT pretty much from the back. Uh, you know, like there's nothing around, but you have such a wide angle of view. That makes uh, Gimbal 5 very attractive for those kind of designs. There is another thing where Gimbal 5 is not the right solution, is if you are looking at radar against targets, like uh, we have with MBX-33R, where you have one positioner and you have multiple targets. You really want to have, you know, an HV kind of view of the wall, and a spherical roll positioner is not going to help you uh, finding those coordinates is going to be difficult. Right? So you have gimbal four, HV positioner, gimbal five, spherical roll positioner. They're complementary. I mean, they they kind of overlap uh, for the vast majority, but they have they have strong qualities uh, that the others uh, can't match. So that's why we have both in our portfolio, and they go hand in hand uh, for different uh, solution. Look, I hope you like this presentation where we could cover Gimbal 5 and spherical roll positioners uh, uh, OTS systems. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Other than that, thank you very much and talk to you later.